Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> boys and girls, welcome back. Where would you rather be? Can I do the intro, please, Joey Day, without you laughing at me right now? I was sneezing, dude. I don't know what you want me to do. Man has allergies, or- Bob. Tis the season. The spring has sprung. Uh, there's almost. dust mites everywhere, man. I don't. It's, you know what? I tell you what. Sorry to sorry to interrupt the intro. On my next place I get is going to have hardwood floors throughout because I can't do carpet anymore. I ripped all the carpeting out of my new house when I bought it. Ripped it all out. And I got lucky because I had the hardwood underneath. But <laughs> Mikey, I do just want to check too. Are we on um gallery view? We are on gallery view. Yes, we okay. are. Bob, you want to explain why weird. why you had to ask that sure. question? Go ahead. I absolutely will. I uh, I left my laptop charger in Arizona. And um yeah. right now my laptop charger is with Fat Perez, who somehow, some way is still in Phoenix a day after the Super Bowl, <laughs> which I'll tell you is probably one of the sickest things I, I've ever seen in my life that this guy's still going out there. When is we he were there? Out? Maybe never. I, so, well, so, <laughs> so we were there since last Thursday doing a Bob Dust sports trip. I mean, Joe, I think you would agree. We were exhausted <laughs> by the time it got, to you know, the day after we did the tournament, Fat Press is still going. He, I, I'm seeing him. He's with Johnny Manziel. Um, he was going to Christian Kirk Super Bowl party. He's oh. all over the place. Um, and the fact that he's still there is one of the more fascinating things I think I've ever heard of him. I, he's got to be on E. And then when he gets back, which he gets back today. He goes to Mexico with his wife on Wednesday. He hasn't booked this flight yet. Well, I mean, that that trip is an absolute penance that he must pay for being away for what it seems like at least two weeks w- without her. So good for Ann Cole cashing in on a nice little trip to Mexico. Arriba Fat Perez back to, you know, good for him. That's going to be excellent content. And uh, I think that that Mexico play was was a wily play, a veteran play by by FP. Yeah, he's got to bring it. I mean, being gone yep. for that long, he's he's got to be able to bring it out of Mexico. You think but yeah, the, trip, it might be a relaxation trip. He you might, know what it is, I Joe, think so. I Joe, think so. I think Joe needs to put him on uh, his wellness routine. I think Joey needs to, to to get Perez on the cupping and the the spaceman suits and and whatever else yeah. Joe's got going on over there. I think Where Perez. You is, is, I, I, is I'm making some lifestyle changes here, Mike. I I've seen it. I've seen it, brother. I've seen it. More power to you. You know, you know, the, the young lady has me doing things I've never done before. I, I'm drinking a spinach smoothie right now. You know, like this is just not normally what I would do, but I feel great. That's I'm good. down like 12 pounds. Really? And, yeah, I'm not I'm not announcing swole cuts back because when I stopped that prematurely, I got body bagged by the bubble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Don, say deservedly so. Yeah. Jerry Don gave him a gave him a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. In the car going there. Yeah, he busted his chops a little bit. Fair but enough. You know, I, I deserved it. I, you know, I let some people down. You know, I still have people messaging me saying, where's Swole Cuts? And I, to be honest, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in the shadows of the night. No one will see what's happening. And hopefully one day I just take my shirt off and I'm chiseled. You know, I, that's a wow. long time coming, but. Uh, Joe, you, but eat. Joe, you're, you say you're going to do it in the shadow of the night. I don't think you've had a workout without telling every single pe- person in your corner that you just worked out. <laughs> you know, like we even had a Bob does sports call. It, you don't even need to have a visual on and he comes in from the gym. Nobody even asks him where he goes, sorry guys. You know, I just came from the gym. He can't work out with having to tell you that he's going to work out. Accountability checks. So yeah. I just don't know. I just don't know if it's in the shadow of the night, but I will say I do like to play. Yeah, I mean, let's not let's not say we're we're not moving in silence here. We're not operating in silence. We're operating on a mountaintop for all to hear, Joseph. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Far from this, that. This but ain't it, Morse code. It's a siren. Yes, <laughs> yes. This is this is this is smoke signals from the top of Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> now we'll Tell say, us. Bob. Bob, you should be happy because Bob always says he has a wheel of shame, a reel of shame of me where he's just literally taken like. Who knows at this point, probably a couple hundred photos and videos of me that are just shameful. And I told him a lot of these should never see the light of day. But I did tell Bob that if I ever did get back in shape, I would give him the green light to go ahead and share some of these. So, Bob, you got to be somewhat hoping that I, I get to that point. No, I think it's great. I think what you're doing is great. I I think we all um, I think we all could bury each other. 
oh, with yeah. some of the photos we all have. Oh, yeah. And sometimes at night we just kind of fire everybody fires away and all the shit photos that we have of each I was other. Say Bob I mean, is literally Bob is literally the king. Bob has a vault. There, there's a vault <laughs> that Bob has where there's just the most unflattering, worst pictures of every single person we're associated with. And you'll just get that random text at like nine o'clock at night where Bob must just be sitting on his couch doing whatever it is he does. And you just get that zoomed in face box shot. And it's like <laughs> you at your worst point in life. It's, it's you did really that crazy. yesterday. We're going on and on about the Super Bowl. We're all jacked up. We don't hear from Bob for like an hour. Me and Mikey V are fired. I really felt Mikey, you and I were locked in yesterday. We were locked in yesterday. Yep. Bob's nowhere to be seen. No. And then all of a sudden, we just get a picture of Nikki Juice blasted out of his mind. <laughs> Smile like, from ear to ear. Chompers <laughs> everywhere. Big glasses. Great shot. Uh, now, Bob, you had to be in the clouds, no? Yeah, I mean, look, I was definitely on one for sure. But, yeah, I, I the, the picture of Nikki Juice just came in. But at the same time, too, if I go away for, like, five minutes, I'll have texts from you guys like, Bob, Bob, where's Bob? Like, where is Bob? This is bad. Can't have Bob. Super Bowl. Yeah, I, I, I totally get it. But I do think that I brought it in the group chat that I was there. I think Fat Perez, not to throw anybody the bus, oh, Fat Perez was terrible. nowhere to be seen. Yeah, well, that's I could have been better. Special set of circumstances could... for Perez, though. I mean, I'm Did just hoping his... Perez is alive. Prize picks video yesterday sure was did. one of the worst things I've ever seen. He could barely talk. He's hurt, man. The guy's a walking corpse. He, he you know what, though? That. A, a for effort, though, man. You know why? He'll still he try is. and step up to the plate. A, a for accountability. Yeah. You yeah. know what? Uh, you know what I'll give Perez to? He's look, no matter how drunk and stuff he gets, he's so good in social settings that having there, having him out there in Arizona, he already locked in one of my dream Bob the sports guests. Like he he is so good at working the floor, even when he's hammered and people love him so much mm -hmm. that I I almost wanted him to stay in Arizona because I wanted him to keep networking on behalf of us, which is exactly what he did. Yeah. It was you know what I mean? Now here's the dialogue that we gotta have though. And I don't want to throw our dear ticket under the bus, but we it 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 has to be addressed and he was worried that Mikey V was going to bring it up because Mikey V gave him a very hard time yesterday uh -huh. as he should ticket and his Philadelphia Eagles one oh. can make the claim that the big ticket yesterday was way too confident and Mikey I'll let you kind of break down from your eyes how it went because I do agree with you well immediately following the coin toss Everyone in the group chat for uh, the show here, including our producers and, and, and everyone that's involved, T-Bone, Twitter, Ben, we all wish Ticket good luck. Everybody sent a good luck text to Ticket. No response from Ticket until the end of the first Eagles drive. And the text message was, don't need luck. That's what he sent after the oh, Eagles boy. punched it in for the first score. And my response was simply, you know better than to do this, Ticket. You simply know better. Yeah. And he yeah. goes, I'm a gambling man. And I said, you're spitting in the face of the gambling gods. Joe said the same thing. And then uh, when the Eagles scored, uh, when the Chiefs scored, excuse me, he didn't stop there. He Then he said, squirrel found a nut. All that is. When the, when the Chiefs scored a touchdown and to respond to the Eagles opening drive. Now, I'm, I guess maybe I'm just so, so scarred emotionally and so downtrodden by the historical... Uh, performances of my team that I just could never even conceive sending a text like that with that much. But I do remember, like, I got to remember the Eagles won the Super Bowl not that long ago. They're not far separated from having a Lombardi trophy. So maybe he's got a little bit of wiggle room there with, with being able to go a little out of pocket and have a little bit of cockiness and confidence. Fine. They were the number one seed, but it's just not something I would do. I wouldn't. And now it was a heartbreaking loss for Ticket and the Eagles and the Chiefs. Mikey, by the way, hats off to all the boys in the in the Brilliantly Dumb show for having the Chiefs. I mean, we all picked the Chiefs. No, I think we came somewhat close in, in, right. in our prediction. Nobody got it spot on, but it was somewhat close. I had 31-28 Chiefs. So I had the three. I think Joe had the Chiefs by three also. And I know, Bob, I think you had the Chiefs by like five or seven. I'm I, high score. I think we all had high scoring games too. I mean, here's the thing is you have Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. I mean, 
the arguably a top 10, top, maybe top five coach of all time. And then, you know, I mean, Mahomes keeps doing this. He's going to be in the top end consideration of one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's there. To, he's there already. He has to be in the conversation. It's hard to right go now. against these guys, right? So to see them as underdogs and you're getting plus money, Ben money line, to me, that just seems like the play. Now, maybe it won't hit, but Jalen Hurts, first time on the big stage. By the way, I thought he played very well. He played very well, yep. Very well. very well. Yep. But here, here's the thing: is that Eagles, you know, well, let's not let's not get it twisted. The Eagles were the far superior team for the entire first half of the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it was getting to the point where I was like, you know, if the Chiefs don't get that miraculous scoop six when when Hertz drops the ball and, and Nick Bolton returns it for a touchdown, if they don't get that one play, the first half is a blowout. Like yeah. the Eagles were blowing them out in the first half. Chiefs couldn't move the ball. Chiefs could not stop them to save their lives. But then the second half, I thought they'd make adjustments, and that's what the better coaches do. They make the adjustments. And then to your point, Joe Mahomes, I think when I think about the greatest quarterbacks of all time, there's two components, the on-field statistics, obviously, but then the rings. And now Mahomes is already tied with Peyton Manning. He's already passed Dan Marino, obviously, because Marino's got none. He's already like in that conversation, I think. I'm not going to put him uh, more than Rogers. Montana yet, but I mean, yeah, he's got more than Rogers. I mean, he's, you know, he's the real deal. It's a real deal. But ticket, that, ticket that was a faux pas, and Ticket knows that was. <laughs> and Mikey, you, know, you called him on it as soon as he said it. You said you just lost the Eagles again. You can't do that. You, you can't, send you those can't do it. You it's can't just, do that. I have a. I have, it. It's crazy play, man. I, I, I it's, it, it's ahead, unlike Bob. Ticket too. It, it's very it un- seemed out of he, character. His awareness. Ticket is a very aware guy, mm. and even more so. When it comes to sports, mm. when he sent that text, yeah. you can't do it. You just can't. Do it. Now, I think maybe me and you, Mikey V, when it comes to the Yankees, we're a little too pessimistic. We might be oh. maybe a little too half class. Oh, definitely. And yeah. So, look, you, you got to take that into account. I think Joe's more of kind of the ticket route. Yeah. For sure. But you just can't send that text. I empathize with him because I remember when the Packers lost last year to the Niners and all year I took the approach of this is the best team we are going to win. And and I felt a level of confidence that I normally don't feel. I'm normally like, Oh, this team's going to blow it somehow. And I tried to go the other route. So I think that's what ticket did, but I tell you what, if it doesn't work out, it really burns you and it puts you in a bad spot. You'll look real bad when you're bragging that your team's so much better. And then you end up losing the game. It's just not a, t- it's just a tough look. Yeah, it is. With, it is. with, with that being said, I, I, I feel for the guy, man, it, it's, that's a tough, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's... that's a tough loss. Um, you know, the last thing I do just want to say on Mahomes, and then we'll go into the buy or sell. I think one of the most impressive things about Mahomes, you have all the on-field stuff that Mikey was talking about. Bro, he is one of the classiest guys. I, I mean, he, he really is. He's one of the most likable guys. There is nothing that you could say bad against Patrick Mahomes. No, I think I think Kelsey is much more unlikable, if you're going to name somebody who's I agree. unlikable. Kelsey's much more unlikable. Uh, I thought again with like some of the stuff post game, like bro, like we get like, don't try and sell me Travis Kelsey on no one believed the chiefs were going to make it back to the super bowl. You are the number one seed out of the AFC yet again, you have the best football player on the planet on your team. You have one of the best head coaches in the history of the game. Don't try and like sell yourself as some woe is me underdog when you're the Kansas city chiefs right now. You can't, you're a dynasty level team right now. You, you can't try and sell me on that. But yeah, Mahomes is classy, and you got to give him extra props because his wife and his brother are complete, complete clowns. They're such clowns. Well, I'm just saying, Jackson Mahomes is he's such a fool. Who's dancing Everything, again? It's just well, you knew that was coming, right? So for Mahomes to remain as grounded as he does, or as it seems he does, surrounded by those two, I mean, you talk about a toxic environment where he could obviously go far off the reservation. He doesn't do it. I, I agree, I Bob. Just, he remains as grounded as you physically possibly could be in the situation and environment that he is in. I don't think it's fair. Like, what I feel bad for him about is that a lot of times he has to answer questions on their behalf. And, you know, they take a lot of heat, whether it's granted or not. But he has to answer so many questions on there. I always feel bad for athletes who – get up to the podium and just get ripped with questions that had nothing to do with them. That had to be something that, 
you know, their wife said or something like that. I always feel bad for those because it, it, it's not on their own merit. For him to handle it the way that he does, like you said, Mikey, um, is unbelievable. And, fellas, I, I, I think now we got a lot to talk about here we today. We do. Juicy podcast today, Joey D. There's yeah, a lot I mean, to discuss. Like a, I just want to ask like a Mikey holiday you rump roast. Well, how much would you give – How what would you give to go back in time <laughs> to the draft and be able to get Mahomes oh. instead of oh. – Good old Mitchie boy. Like any, any, you... anything short of my wife and children. <laughs> <laughs> short of my uh, wife and kids, I really don't. I, I don't know. Uh, probably anything. Do anything you think? Short of that. Do you think the Bears would have won a Super Bowl in the time leading up if they had gotten Mahomes instead yes. of Mitch? Yes, they would have won in 2018. That team would have won the Super Bowl in 2018 if if the if Mahomes was the quarterback. Just think about first of all, Nagy, this clown. Mm-hmm. He just wins the Super Bowl, yeah, which is like salt in the room. <laughs> He's taking pictures, Retail. hugging Mahomes in the locker room. It's like a double doink all over <laughs> again. If the Bears defense that they had in 2018, that team with Khalil Mack and Roquan Smith, Prince of Mukamara, Eddie Jackson, all these guys, these studs, Eddie Goldman when he was still playing, that team with, with Mahomes at quarterback, with Allen Robinson when Allen Robinson was still oh, yeah. really good, they, that team would easily – easily have at least made it i think to the nfc title game i think they would have won the whole thing they only lost four games that whole year with trubisky at quarterback and he was so bad in the second half of the year (laughs) they would have a super bowl trophy but that's not the way it went i can't go back in time but i would give up anything short of my wife and children (laughs) anything look let's um let's go on over into our buy or sell segment i i've been for me i've been i mean you guys know this too i i've been chomping at the bit to get to this cell, oh, yeah. it, oh, it's, yeah. I, I really have, it really, really has, has irked me. And look, I think now we have to be somewhat, we, we got to be careful on different guys that we, you know, we may bash that we don't like or whatnot. And I'll give you a classic example. Joey D, do we not remember Mikey V just burying Christian Kirk when he Guys, signed this that is contract. again, this is a pretzel. Oh, oh, this is another, not this is another By the way, guy had an unreal season. He had, he had a, a good year. season. He had a good season. He had a great year. He had a good season. I still think, year. I still think, all I'm saying is that is, as a GM, I wouldn't be able to pay what they paid him. I wouldn't. Mikey V, we met That's him, by the way, in Scottsdale. You I'm could sure not he's a great ask guy. for a guy. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's a great guy. I, I'm sure he's a great guy. I'd love to have him on. I think he's a cool guy. Seems like, a you know, one of the boys. God bless him. Had a great year, by the way. But if you're ranking the tiers of wide receivers in the NFL, I mean, I understand he's your friend now, so you're not going to say anything. But Would like, you not take him on the Bears? Of course, I, I, Joe, I'd oh, take fucking that. Bob on the Bears, that wide receiver. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. I, I mean, not, not a knock against Bob, but I mean, like, Price, that's like asking, I don't know. I, I, that's that's crazy. That's like asking me if I want, it, if I want oxygen tomorrow when I wake up. Of course, <laughs> I, I like it. I'm in this. I'm in the golf cart with him, okay, and we're filming oh. with him, and he's talking to me, and I said, you know, it's got to feel so good for you, you know, a lot of doubters out there. You signed that big contract. <laughs> Food's got to taste better now. Like you're really doing good. Again, like you say, he couldn't be nicer. But he said, you know, there's a lot of people that I took a lot of shit for that, and a lot of people who hated God. And as he's talking, I'm just thinking of Mikey <laughs> the, the entire time. So eventually, I'm just like, look. I got to get ahead of this. Like, I'm just going to, I was like, yeah, look, Mikey V was the first one to say he was wrong about <laughs> God. He was, he was that, and he said, he goes, he goes, no, I love Mikey Z, Mikey V, but oh, he heard it. Wow. He, oh, that's nice he, to hear. Yeah. That's nice to hear. He, you know what, Christian, you're a good guy. It. I think you are one of the better receivers. <laughs> in I really, I really do. I really do. But that's the thing. Always it's, have. Because we have to be careful. And yeah, I, sometimes I think, is. Look, and by the way, we don't ever come on and grill. We're, it's not like we're torching people out here. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt the Brilliantly Dumb Show to let you know that the Brilliantly Dumb Show is brought to you by our good friends over at BetterHelp.com. Life doesn't always go the way you want to, and it doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. That's why BetterHelp.com is here. BetterHelp.com matches you with a licensed therapist. They have matched over 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% 
online, plus it's affordable, and you don't have to go to a doctor's office or go to some type of building. You could do it all from the comfort of your home. You can't go wrong when you go with betterhelp.com. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash BDS. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BDS, betterhelp.com. Change your life today for the better. Now, with that being said for myself, Mm. I find this guy Mm. to be so brash and so arrogant, and Mm. nobody's denying the fact that he's clearly a very good coach, but I am selling Nick Sirianni, (laughs) particularly the the thing that just capitalizes it, like spotlights it all for me. Mikey, that video that you sent us this morning, when the challenge was going on, and he thought that it was a catch that they had his first time, and he's pointing in the camera first down, and Jalen Hurts has to be the one to put his arm down and tell him just to wait and to not do that. Yeah, It's such a bad look for the head coach. And even the game prior, yep. he's looking into the camera and he's nodding his head into the camera. He told it's the one, just- he shoved the one guy to the side and said, this is my, I know what the fuck I'm doing in the Giants game, if you remember that. Yeah. Then in yeah. the, press con- the press conference of the NFC Championship game, he like legitimately, like not yelled, but scolded kind of his little, his little girl, his daughter, which... Uh, listen, sure. as, a, as a parent, you never judge what other parents do. But thinking about it, like she's on a, a podium. She has no idea what's going on. She's a little kid. She's being playful. The media probably thinks it's hysterical. And he's like, stop. Like real. And like, I don't know. I just, I hope I don't get, wouldn't get caught out of pocket in a public venue like that. Getting really upset with my kid. I don't think that was a good thing either. That kind of turned me off. Do you think he's just passionate? Because I watched the 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 anthem and he was crying, and I thought that was pretty moving. I think he's just a passionate. Yeah, he's guy. Jack. He's a passionate. There's no doubt that he's an emotional guy. Like he's he's fired up all the time. And and he's Italian. I can identify with that a little bit. First time there, maybe people. he's just a little out of out of his element. You know, I don't know. I I have to yeah. lean with Bob though. I think he he's teetering on the line of being a douchebag. He is. I, I, he, he is. He, he's towing the he, line of being a douchebag. He's look, and again, Joe. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong on it. I don't want to bash the guy, but I think it's all for show. I mm. really do. I, mm. I think so much of what he's doing and what he's saying is for show, and he knows that he's in the spot. I just was so I was so turned off by him. I really was. And with that being said. Jalen Hurts is one of the most likable. Like, there's yeah. nothing really to dislike about the Eagles team. They're a very likable team. But because of him, I wanted the Chiefs to win so bad. They really uh, did. Yeah. 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 I do. Yeah, agree I, with you, I just, we got to be careful who we sell now. This podcast is getting bigger. I'm, For me, it was seeing Ryan Clark come on, and then I'm watching him this morning on first take. The, the podcast is getting bigger. We got to be a little bit, you know, aware. I, think, I, I Listen, I think that we're fair to everybody. And I will stand on my principles and what I say. And if somebody ever comes on the show that I sold, I'll explain why I sold them. I don't think we're going to have Jackson Mahomes on the show anytime soon. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't allow it. I wouldn't allow it, Bob. I'd have to put a show on there. Patrick, I would have, I but I'd explain, I'd explain to him why. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. I think he told himself to cry. I think for that well, national anthem, he said to himself... He wanted to cry. I think every bit of him wanted to oh, just yeah, rip down. He was his... streaming down his face. There were others Ellie crying, Salt? though, Bob, to be fair. The, Jason Kelsey was tearing up, you could tell. Chris Staples it was a different did type of tears. Performer. It was a hell yes, of an he anthem. Did a really good it was job. a hell of an it anthem. It sure was. Yeah. And also, too, Rihanna was unbelievable. Oh, tremendous. Tremendous. Unbelievable. I'm tremendous. kind of fucking around about the crying, but I do think he wanted to <laughs> cry in that moment. I really do. I really, really do. That's all I got. Joey D, let's send it to you. I mean, you just mentioned my, my buy this this week is Rihanna's performance. And here, here's that's a cutsy brand. That's a cutsy brand buy right he, now. There there is. Is. There listen, is. listen yep. to me, hear me out. I think sometimes with these Super Bowl performances, and, and I was saying it to Nicole yesterday, they go too far out. They do too much like of the show and not enough of the actual performance. Now, I don't know if it's because she's pregnant, which just was confirmed, so she couldn't do more elaborate dancing and stuff, but they really stuck to the performance element, and I don't. I thought she knocked it out of the park. I thought it was, the, the vocals were on, the song selection, the, the, you know, from an aesthetic point, it was super cool. 
I thought that was probably one of the better Super Bowl performances I've seen in the last five to ten years. I thought it was exciting. I agree. I agree. I'm I'm totally she, on board. She's got especially bad. you got to think this she's, is someone. She's got bomb after bomb after oh, bomb. Every song, song, every song's a bomb. By the way, Bob was so off with his first song. If we want to be honest, I mean, I'm sorry, Bob, you missed tough. by a mile. But to your point, <laughs> there's so many there's so many heaters that she has. It's hard to choose. Look at which one. Disgusting. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it. Uh, that's exactly you know, missed by a mile. It's a hard thing to choose. I was. I mean, you don't know hard, what song she's gonna she's gonna say. She's got. I, I would not have thought "Bitch, Bitch, Better Have My Money" be the first song. But well, the reason I didn't think it was gonna be "Bitch, Better Have My Money" is I didn't think she could curse. Hmm. hmm. You know, I don't what know I mean? if that's even considered a curse anymore. That word, I don't know. I, it's a I female dog, think, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I also I also think too that for her, I think people get too caught up in the collabs. For her oh. to go solo on that, I loved it. Really was a power statement. Yeah. Well, she's also been she's been kind of MIA for a long she time. Has. So I think she, she definitely... just came out. She wanted to prove to the world, hey, I'm still I'm still around. I got a couple babies I'm pushing out, but I'm still around and I'm still a force to be reckoned with. Mikey V, let's send it over to you. Yeah, my sell, uh, I'm selling this week. I'm I'm going to sell Tahoma 31. Uh, if you don't know what Tahoma 31 is, that's the type of grass hybrid that was used for the field last <laughs> night. <laughs> this field was an absolute disgrace for being a Super Bowl playing field. Now, all the players complained about it both sides after the game last night. It was like a slip and slide. It, it was, it, you cannot have a Super Bowl on a surface like that without somebody making a call and saying, listen, this surface is not ready to boot. The problem is, is that this was the same playing surface that they had for the TCU Michigan college semi uh, semifinal playoff semifinal. It was the same field, right? The same grass. And they all complained after that game, how bad the field was, how bad the playing conditions were. They spent almost $1 million just for the field and the maintenance to the field. And for that to be the final result, and they're taking care of it for two weeks, they're rolling the entire field out to get sun every day. The whole field actually rolls out of the stadium to get sun. For that to be the final end result for the playing surface for the Super Bowl, it's inexcusable. Whoever was in charge of that shouldn't be in charge of that much longer, uh, in my opinion. And I'm not one for firing people, but I mean, you just can't have that. You can't have it. You can't have it. I uh, even horrible job with the field. Horrible. First off, Mikey, what's what's the name of the grass again? Tahoma 31. It's two types of Bermuda grasses. <laughs> it's two types of Bermuda grasses and rye grass, and it's called Tahoma 31. It's a blend made in a laboratory, Oklahoma State. Uh, that's that's the guy who was in charge of the side. <laughs> Stop, and the sod man, father, I tell you what, the sod father, he may, he he's he might get whacked after this one because that's that's real bad, real bad. The sod father, what kind of balls this guy has? I like it. You you said like field, one million. Though. Yeah, it is a little bit arrogant it, to believe it. Come to think of it, Joey D. I mean, for him to wear that shirt, it really <laughs> is. That's a little bit arrogant. Well, it's ironic because of how terrible the field was. I mean, for my wife, who's uh, uh she's a casual watcher of football. She watches, you know, when my teams play. But for her to watch the game with me and her to say, man, this field like looks kind of terrible. For her to say that, that's not good. That's not good. And it wasn't good. And the players called, all the players, both sides called it out. They said the it was worst like look on an ice skating rink. The worst look was when the kickoff for the Eagles, Elliot almost yeah. slipped right on the kickoff. Yeah. That's, yeah. It was bad. Yeah. yeah I'm selling the yeah. shit out of that field. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't Tahoma have done that. 31. Tahoma 31. Tahoma 31. Retire you it. Know this. Retire it. Mikey, I'm going to tell you this. I, I honestly, I said it la on the last episode, I hope you never buy again. I like when Mikey sells, it's it's the best. It's it, his, his <laughs> love sells passion, are so wow. damn good. Yeah, it really is. Mm. Um, okay, fellas, there's the Super Bowl chatter. Um, we got a couple of announcements that we're going to make here today. We got a couple of announcements, big old announcements that we're going to make here today. I do want to get into the Bobby Blockbuster yeah. um, segment here. For a sec, let me ask you something, Mikey. What do you, because now, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, you didn't have, you agreed to it, but you didn't 
have much of a say in this. We feel like the ball was kind of given to Mikey here, right? Yeah, it was. I'm yeah, take it, was full his, it was his shot to take. Yep. Okay. Did you feel confident about it? Did you feel nearly as confident in Green Book that you did in Ferris Bueller's Day Off? No, oh, not no. not as confident, no. But no, I no. did I did think this would go past the the uh, the threshold of a six bagel ranking. I'm, I predicted that this would be over a six. Now, by the look Bob just gave, this looks like it's falling well below a five. Here's, here's the problem: is it's an old movie. This yeah, guy can't watch know. movie right. visit non five K. Exactly right. It's exactly and, right. And so you that's know why I was I was really quick to say I I don't know, which is ridiculous, Bob. Because by the way, some to Mikey and Mikey's point, some of the best movies of all time happened before the <laughs> mid nineties. Right, Joe. Right, we've right. addressed that. Nobody's disagreeing with that. Nobody disagreeing. But, but the fact that it, it comes down to preparation, and, and I didn't think that you guys were prepared last week. No, and that's not fair. That is not fair. I made several really good recommendations, and Mikey V didn't agree with me. And so I said, okay, Mikey V, get, you got the rock. But by the way, I, I believe that two or three of the recommendations I gave you, Bob, would have hit. I really did you guys have we'll, we'll Did you guys have it? Did you guys have a dialogue prior to last week's episode about no. Bobby Bonfire? No, we didn't. Okay. That's I'm all. Being, full that's transparency, all. we didn't. But I appreciate it. That's all I'm saying. I will pivot to, I'll you, pivot you to Cutsy's list, suggestions. You didn't have the dialogue with Mikey V. I will pivot to Cutsy's suggestions this week. Obviously, Bob is going to fucking shit can Ferris yeah, Bueller's Day off. So let's hear about the shit cannon. Go ahead. Give it <laughs> ranking. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. I'm sure the didn't like list is going to far exceed the like list. So go ahead. Start. Right, right out of the gate, and Joe said it is. It was definitely an older movie. I thought it was cute. I, I, I really, it was cute. It, it, it was, you know, it, it wasn't the worst movie that I've ever seen. Was it like a Green Book that I walked out of with last week? No. Um, first off, I'd never seen Charlie Sheen that young. He was a good-looking cat. Mm. Uh, I, yeah, I, I thought, I thought it was good. I, I kind of, I guess, I get what you were going for. But even watching it, Mikey, I knew, I'm like, there's no way he was this confident. What happened with you two with Green Book the week prior, the synergy that you guys had out of that was special. Mm. And I was ready to go. I was ready to fire. Um, I didn't think of that. I, you know, I thought it was cute. I thought the ending was kind of funny. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of slapstick. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I almost like a <laughs> Mikey yeah. V is just the So ball. what's the what's the rating, Bob? Let's let's cut to brass tacks. Four bagels. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay. Yeah, it's four bagels. Swing and a miss. But, but again, I'm not, it's not the it's not the worst. It's not the by no means was it the worst movie I've ever seen. I mean, it was okay. The girl in it is gorgeous. Um, okay. You know, so yeah, it was okay. But with that being said, fellas, and we're already we're already on the board, which is nice. Let's hear it. Bobby Blockbuster, fire my way. Did we have a dialogue this week? Joseph? No, we didn't have a dialogue because, well, Bob, by the way, let's let's call it speed to speed. You watched the movie just before we filmed the podcast. I tell you what, we, did, we, we, did, we did semi have the dialogue because if you remember last week's show, Joe suggested that we watch the movie Peanut Butter Falcon. And if people yes. remember, I, I kind of crucified him because – I thought that the title of the movie was preposterous, Peanut Butter Falcon. I know I didn't get it, right? I watched Peanut Butter Falcon, Joe. Thoughts? I'm going to say it was a good movie. It was a good movie. I wouldn't say it was a great movie. However, How knowing many Bob, knowing Bob. I think Bob would like Bob it. Bob would like it. Bob would like it. I it's think we new. double down and go yeah. back to Peanut Butter Falcon. Yeah, I think so. I think and by the way, if you Bob. look through the comments, Bob, of last week's episode on YouTube, there is a lot of love for the Peanut Butter Falcon. There is. A t that's why I watched it, because everyone came after me. They were like, Mikey, you balked on that one. Peanut Butter Falcon's Bob, awesome. Bob, it's an inspiring story. But 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 I, I wasn't bashing Peanut Butter Falcon. I thought Not the guy you, I'm Peanut saying Butter Mikey, Falcon was it very was me. It was me. It was me. I got there lambasted for it. The same way. It. The same way that you bastard Christian Kirk. Same <laughs> way you bastard Christian Kirk. Very you know what? Here, I will the peanut, see this. the peanut butter jaguar, Christian. Kirk. Mikey V is a man of integrity. He <laughs> said he watched it, he enjoyed the movie, and he said, yes. You know what? I, I gave extensive, quick. I gave extensive notes on it on Twitter. People loved it, they respected the review. I think that that's the play for Bob this week. And Bob, I'm I being agree. honest, I, I, I do think that you will like this movie. Shia LaBeouf, who by the way, Bob loves good. in holes. 
He's in that okay. movie. So, yeah, that's this, terrific. This will be, this will be a hit he, with He a much better performance in this movie. Much better. Yep. He's pretty yep. good in Holes, too, though, Joey D. Uh, yeah, well, it's Holes is not, a, is not, to me, a cinematic expertise oh, movie it's to watch. A classic. It's a classic. But I will say, Bob, I, I, I do agree with Mikey V. We double down. Now, Mikey V, I, I need to watch The Blue Chips. I was in Scottsdale this week. I didn't watch it. I think we go to Peanut Butter Falcon this yeah. week. Yeah, I will yeah. watch the blue chips. If we like that, then we could go. Blue to that. chips is probably off the table. You just can't Good give Bob. Us. You can't give Bob anything pre two thousand and ten. You just can't. No, it, but it's a sports movie, so it, it is a sports. It changes movie. the it dynamics. Is. Yeah, sports movies. You could probably move it back to like eighty five. That's the latest. <laughs> eighty five to ninety, and then sports movies. Yeah. Get yeah. Yeah. So Bob, Peanut Butter Falcon this week yes. is yes. your yes. blockbuster of the week. I yes. just think we we got to go to this one. It's it's a no brainer. And I think Blue Chip will watch that. And that might be the one. By the way, I do have a couple in the chamber that I still do Good. think Bob would like. So we are doing our homework. It's just you're very tough. You'd be like a I'm very not, tough essay to write. I'm not denying that, Joe. Haven't from day one. But again, if I got to do my homework, I would expect that you guys That's would fair. do it too. And at least yeah, have a dialogue. And I don't I, think. Well, here's the thing. I didn't feel the dialogue was necessary. Mike, because my suggestion was going to be Peanut Butter Falcon. And after what Joe had said last week, I knew he would run with that. And I think that will be a hit for you. I do think. Yeah, so. I, I would be shocked if this got anything less than six bagels. Me too. Me too. I think six, what did you, uh, seven, uh, seven. I, I think, think it could hit the seven threshold. What did he give Green Book? He gave it he eight. an eight, yeah. I mean, that that's terrific. If, you give, if Bob gives it an eight, it might as well be like off the charts. Right. Like a, the only movie known that's a 10 out of 10 Bobby Bagels is Remember the Titans. That's the, that's yeah, the only that's, movie. That's a ten out of ten. That's, movie. That's movie. By the way, it wasn't yeah. filmed in five K. We're just gonna throw that out there. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. But, uh, that's okay. Sports. It's like Mikey said. Though sports does. That is true. If it's a sports movie, you can go ten years back. <laughs> Bob would be fine with Hoosiers. <laughs> Yeah, Hoosiers is great. It's a great yeah, movie. Yeah, that thing looks like it was filmed in the fucking prehistoric age. Hey, Joe, cinema, cinema, baby. You got to be able oh, to appreciate wow, this now. <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, guy this watches guy. a couple of movies. He's fucking Roger Ebert already. <laughs> <laughs> no idea who that is, but I'm sure he was very Siskel cool. and Ebert, Bob? Sure Give it two thumbs up. You never heard that before? Which one died, Siskel or Ebert? I don't know. One, one of them died. One All right. All right. Well, I think fellas, it was Siskel. Let's keep him. Two major announcements, boys. Two major announcements, Okay. Let me get a little bit of a drum roll here, there, please, Joey D. Let me get a little bit of a drum roll here, please. First, the fellas, starting now, starting yeah. right now, have signed with DraftKings. Now, with that being said, before we even go into DraftKings, I do want to say us going absolute stone cold on prize picks with our bets has nothing to do with us <laughs> going over the bet. No, nothing. It has nothing to do with it. The, the people over at prize picks could not have been better to us. Honest to God. They're unbelievable. They're on the move. They're one of the top apps in sports. Um, and they were really great to us. There was a long back and forth. Well, we do like with DraftKings, and correct me if I'm wrong, fellas. Now Mikey V will really be able to go to town on different money lines and straight up bets, which is really where he thrives. And we felt at, at the time it would be a good fit for us with all the connections they have. But again, prize picks could not have been better to us. Great A people. They were all class. Let's clap it up for prize picks now, fellas. Very Always nice. a fan and of prize picks, man. Always will be. Mikey V and Joey D, I'll let you guys just take the floor to touch on that till we get to our next announcement. DraftKings to me is a special opportunity for us. For me personally, though, when gambling first became legal in New Jersey, I have been using DraftKings, the sportsbook app, since the since the time that launched and happened. I don't use FanDuel. I don't use any of the other ones typically. I always found DraftKings had the most favorable lines, uh, most favorable odds. Uh, large plethora of uh, of selections for props and shit like that stuff that other other companies just didn't have or maybe I just didn't see. So for us to go with them was great for me because that's the familiarity I always had with these online sport sportsbook apps. So DraftKings to me has always been the app that I've used. It's just per chance that now we have the opportunity to work with them. I couldn't be more excited. I think it's going to be fantastic. And to Bob's point, Price Picks is probably one of the classiest group of individuals at that company. Nothing but good stuff to say about them. They were genuine and so generous and good to us from, from Jump Street. 
Uh, I can't say enough things about them. And like Bob said, they're on the rise and they're going to be a big dog in that space. There's no doubt in my mind about it because they're so unique. But obviously uh, we're with a Titan now and I like being with the Titans. That's a good call. <laughs> Remember, I, I, I will say to your point, it was cool, at least from my, you know, from my perspective, because when you and Mikey first signed with draft or with prize picks and you guys were doing your podcast before I was even a part of it is really how I actually ended up becoming a staple part of this podcast. If you remember, I came on and gave, you know, my own pick for DK Metcalf. And then we kind of started doing my own segment. And before you knew it, the synergy between the three of us, we just ended up all being part of this podcast. So it's really cool because in many ways, if it wasn't for prize picks, you know, we might not be here the same way we are right now on the brilliantly dumb show. So a lot of love to them. It's really cool to see them. You know, I was able to be fortunate enough to be sponsored by them this year. Just the amount of, you know, love that they showed us, how good they were with us, how understanding they were of our schedules and whatnot, just very easy people to work with and to see them becoming bigger and, and, and growing is really cool because we're part of that. And, you know, you like to think at some point, maybe we're part of that movement, but nothing but the best to them. Uh, DraftKings is going to be really cool. I think it's to your point, Bob, I do think Mikey V can really thrive in this environment. I mean, even in his only subs, he's given picks, he's given basketball, he's given all sorts of stuff. Now it's going to really open up, you know, Pandora's box. You like to think where he can really do parlays, single straight bets, money lines. You still can do player props bets. So there's a lot more opportunities. And I do think we are going to get back. I think this year was a little bit of a speed bump for us. We started out hot out of the gates and kind of slowed down the second half of the season for the NFL for whatever reason, really just seemed incredibly tough. And I just think that this time moving forward is going to really get back to where we can make our, you know, our followers and our fan base, some serious cash. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Shout out prize picks, shout out DraftKings. more to come. Joey D can I get another drum roll here? please? And now we pan over Mikey V announcement number two for the boys. Mikey V take it away. Well, announcement number two is that uh, after a long-awaited uh, thought process and 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 um, and just a, an overall lifestyle change, I guess it has to be when you get involved with something like this. And uh, no, I'm not retiring, um, but I will be joining the golf space. I will be joining the golf space. I am going to be purchasing clubs. I needed to get the full endorsement and 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 God's wishes from my wife first and foremost. Before I was able to shout out Holly V. Yeah, it up yeah. Holly I needed that. There was no way I was going to do this without her blessing, uh, because I know it's time consuming, especially for somebody like me who hasn't picked up a club in probably 20 years. Um, so I know it's going to take me a long time to get acclimated and and not totally embarrass myself. That being said, I am fully mentally prepared to be the worst golfer on the eastern seaboard for some <laughs> period of time. I, I'm I'm totally ready to accept that. I really am. I, I I'm a competitive mean, guy. You're an Bob, athlete, I know, dude. I, yeah, but Bob's rolling his eyes. He knows I'm ultra competitive, but I'm not stupid. I know how difficult the game is because everyone I know plays and everyone says the same thing about it. Mikey, that it's just I, so goddamn hard. So it's, I'm ready. I, pre- I am ready. I, I appreciate you taking that humble approach because that's really the approach you want to have coming into the game first things first getting fit for clubs they're going to give you a goddamn pogo stick in order to get up to, <laughs> to, to get you something that's going to fit that frame but but i appreciate going humble the thing that's i'm so jacked up for it and i do want to see like i i would be so curious just to see mikey's first swing to see how it looks and i agree with joe you're an athlete the thing that makes me sick and it's going to happen i'm fully prepared for it give mikey v one month no. He's going to be better than me and Joe. No it's gonna be like, way. Because no you're such you're such a stick, twisted competitor. You got that like Kobe thing in you to where like he won't stop. He's such a sick competitor. Um, he, you'll he, be like the guys in the grocery store while he's waiting for the cash register. He's just going to be. Now, I have seen guys, I, I have seen guys like that, and that fascinates me. That does because the other day in the gym, just doing there, I was kind of like, you know, I probably have to start opening up my hips a lot more. So I was doing a little little rotational work, but not like faking mock swings. Like I watch that and it's so bizarre to me. It's so, you know, that's so Greek to me, you know, entrenched in your lifestyle. Mikey V, this is so much more than just a hobby or or a game that you play. It just becomes, by the way, Bob, I couldn't be more thrilled when Mikey told me yesterday, or by the way, it was Mikey V's birthday yesterday. Shout out to the young man, 37 now. 
But I told him, I said, this is the best birthday gift you could ever give to yourself because not only are you going to enjoy it, but now it opens up opportunities where if we go to Scott's deal or do things like that, we can bring him along and it will be so great to have him on some of these trips. And by the way, Bob, I'm going to throw it out right there. I would love Mikey V on a Bob Does Sports episode. I'm just, I'm telling you right now, I would love it. That that definitely would be the overall goal. Like that's why watching this whole progress, watching go down, I think he would kill it. So I think Mikey knows that he would get the nod on the episode for sure. I mean, it's a that's a no brainer. Um, and again, different circumstances for you, Mikey, because you got the kids, you got the family, you got your full time job. So it's going to be tough. But if you know Mikey V, you just know. And especially once he gets the bug, it's game over and he's yeah. coming for that ass and look out i just i know it but again i appreciate the humble approach yeah mikey mulligan's in full effect ladies and i tell you mikey by the way you know who you should really chum up with i this guy i i don't know him well but i've met him multiple times in your group and i feel like he really gets golf is fubu lu i think is the guy who would show you the ropes very well i do Fubu's believe gonna- that Boo is going to clip this and send it immediately to Dickie Gas. That's where exactly this clip. Is I going don't to go know to. Dickie Gas. It's going to go right to Dickie Gas. Boo's just going to smile and laugh and say, "You see, you see." Because they're it's nothing against Gas. Stuff. I've never talked golf with Gas. I've talked golf with Fubu Lu. Yes. And the guy, he's played Pine Valley. He knows good courses. I I really think he'll take it upon himself to show you the ropes. And that's the kind of person you need in your corner. There's there's a couple things I'm going to say very quickly, and I'll wrap it up. Number one. I'm surrounded by my closest friends for the majority all are, are very much into golf, not to this, to the level where they play as much as, as, as you guys, because they're not full-time doing anything like that, but guys who play religiously probably once a weekend, once every other weekend uh, and love the game. So I know I'll be, uh, you know, close to them, but then to have you two guys available to pick your brain, to have Perez available as a scratch golfer who I could literally call at any time and pick his brain about the game. I'm confident that I'll be surrounded by enough people to where I'll get acclimated. Now I won't, I'm not going to say I'm going to get good because I know I, I, I really believe I'm going to have a difficult time. I really do. Um, but again, we'll see. I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to fully commit to it again. I don't do things uh, half ass. So if I'm going to commit, I'm going to commit all the way and I'm going to commit all the way. Uh, the, the, you know, I'm going to have to spend time doing it. Going to have to do what I got to do to get out. On the, you know what? It is what it is. But I'll tell you what, arrow's pointing up, I think, for everything with this golf move. I really also, believe that. Too, I really believe that. Bob, he's sponsored by Roback. He's going to have some fresh fits on the golf course. Oh, I'll be one of the better dressed golfers. <laughs> on the course. That I will say. That I will say. Horrible player, but I will look good playing horribly. I will. <laughs> All right, fellas, big, big one for the boys. So I do want to track that progress, maybe show some swings up here. It'll be fun to watch. Um, and for the love of God, swing-wise, don't ask us for advice, Mikey V. That call needs <laughs> to go to Perez every single time. Um, but we're here for you. That's yeah, for damn sure. It. I, <laughs> um, I want to get into our top five. I think this is a Joey D-sponsored top five. Today's top five is going to be food on food pairings. This was a tough one. I struggled with this one a little bit. I really did. We've done food and drink pairings, I believe. Yes. The food on food pairings is a whole different – it's a whole different ball game um, and a very good one. Joey D, it's your top five, so we'll let you start and then swing it to Mikey V. I'll close this down. All right. Um, I lo- I'm going to go on the record and say I love when we do food top fives more than anything because – I think they're so they're just they're they're just the best and everybody has their own opinions on them so I think it makes for a great top 5. So, um let me let me get right into it. Number 5, I'm going to go right out of the gates. I'm going to go peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I I think you're remiss to see a a sandwich if you do peanut butter and you don't throw some jelly in there. It's just it's it's a great A combination. You can't go wrong with it. Give me that at 5. And number four, I'm going to switch this, uh, switch it up a little bit. I'm going to go hamburger and French fries. I think that is a hell of a pairing. I mean, it's it's just it's it's well known. You don't order a burger without French fries. Number three, I'm going to go to a breakfast. We're going to go to bacon and eggs. For me, I'm a big. I know some people say, "Oh, you could do sausage. You could do that." Ah, uh, you do a couple sunny side or fried eggs. You got to throw a couple strips of bacon in there. 
makes all the difference in the world. Give me that at three. And number two, one of my favorite snacks to have. I love Tostitos scoops from Mikey V. What better way to do is chips and salsa, whether that's pico de gallo or hot salsa or whatever. <laughs> Bob's got a problem with that. But but to me, so because I wanted to do this too. To me, salsa is more of like a condiment. To me, salsa is more food, of like a food, um, no. I I disagree because I would have put chips and salsa on there too. But we, I didn't. I do rec- I do recall that when we did top five condiments, Joe had salsa in his top five as a which, condiment, which is fine. Condiment. And I agree. I have no problem with that. I love chips and salsa. I just think salsa. I think if you if if we allow salsa, I think it changes. The list. Am I wrong about that, Mikey? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it off. No. I'll take it off. I'll take it off. Okay. I'll pivot. Because that would be like me doing like a, I don't know, bagel and cream cheese almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that was what I was going to pivot to. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. All right, that's... I'll change. I'll change. I'll change it up again. I'll change yeah. it up again. Give me pizza and chicken wings. Okay. 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 I'll go pizza and wings. Okay. I, I'll, by the way, that was not my. That was going to be maybe like an honorable mention. I, I think that's great. That's a good play. I think that'll that's a that'll great hit. recovery. That'll pizza hit. and wings. People love and, pizza and people love wings. And number yeah. one for me, this this comes out of left field, but I was thinking about it, and I just don't think I could ever do the two without mashed potatoes and gravy mm. is number one for me. I think it's just a, by a long. What 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 do you have problem now, Bob? It's a sauce. It's fruit. are we have? I mean, Mikey. Are, are are we having that? Same? I mean, I I can't consider gravy a food, man. Uh, you can't. I mean, you just gravy you, is because here's the thing. Could to me, no, all can't. right. Here's here was you my can't. system. Wait, hold on. Here was my protocol and procedure for naming these eligible uh, list goers. Right. I said both items have to be able to stand alone as a food. That's what totally and right. gravy cannot stand oh, alone. It salsa God. cannot stand alone. It's, cream cheese cannot stand alone. That's the only thing I was saying. But okay. Joe, you gotta be able, but can you see? I mean, you gotta be able to see that. I've though, pivoted right? once already, Bob. I'll pivot again. Okay. But you're I'll pivoting go, to the same thing. I'll pivot. Give me soup and sandwich. Soup and a sandwich is a good one. Bingo. That's Bingo. a good that's, that's a great very, play. That's a very that's a really good job there, Joe. That is, <laughs> that's a good that play, Joe. Really nice. I mean, I'd be quick on my feet. Otherwise, I was going to end up with another Who situation like I had. Good with, what, was, what was the restaurant I got buried for? Denny's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Denny's. Oh, that yeah, was yeah, a pivot yeah, that, that did tough. not work well. Yeah, that was yeah. tough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was tough. <laughs> me and jo- By the way, me and Joe's list is like almost the same. I was hoping you wouldn't say that because so is mine. My number five, is all number, yours, number five, go tomato and mozzarella. Sliced oh, tomatoes nice. and mozzarella, caprese salad, something like that. Tomatoes and mozzarella, I think, can stand alone. Obviously, fresh mozzarella slice, tomato slice, I think that could stand alone. But together, magical combo, caprese salad. Number four, give me pie, apple pie, and ice cream. Oh, apple pie and ice yeah. cream or pie ah, a la mode. Good. I love a pie good. with ice cream. You can't be a la mode, as Mikey says. Even like a pumpkin pie <laughs> yeah, with, with yeah. some ice cream. And Ryan Clark, shout out Ryan Clark. He's That's my a great inspiration clip, for that pick. Great clip. <laughs> great clip. Number three, give me surf and turf. Give me a piece of oh. steak and a lobster tail. A steak and a lobster tail, I think, is one of the more magical pairings out there. I don't think you could go wrong. Uh, surf and turf at three. Two, Joey D, bacon and eggs at two. Love bacon and eggs play. I think that's 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 an automatic. If you're at a breakfast buffet now, it's not something I'm going to order if I go out for breakfast. But if you're at a hotel or a buffet or something, and they got the the platter of the bacon and the platter of eggs, you're putting both of those on your plate every single time. And then number one to me, the the king of combo. Uh, you can't have a cheeseburger without French fries. It yeah. just doesn't work. Whatever type of fries you want, you could you could change that up. Waffle, curly, uh, you know, steak, whatever kind of fries, but. Burger and fries to me is 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 the king on the food pairing list. Mike, I, is I, good. I think it's a tremendous list, man. I, I to be honest with you, I'm shocked that our lists are as similar as they. I mean, it's almost it's almost dead on. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a great list, Joey. Do you have any issues there? No, no. I I mean, I I, I kind of I wish I had not like so a couple of these things I had on my list. I wish I would have had like alternatives. Because the steak and lobster play is great, um, so and the, and the apple pie and the ice cream was actually another another one I had as honorable mention. But yeah, no, it's a good list. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that kind of stuck us a little bit. I mean, I, I think we're a little razzled after that. Right. Um, all right, so here we go. Five. Joey D, the reason I liked it so much, I got it right there with you. I got five. Give me pizza and wings. When I think football Sunday, especially just coming off the Super Bowl, even like for me, it was like I had to have wings. Pizza and wings is like the staple of football, of bar food. Four, right there with you guys. Bacon and eggs. Give me bacon and eggs all day long. I went between for three soup in a sandwich and chips in a sandwich. I, I ended up going chips. with chips in a yeah. sandwich. Yeah, yeah if, if you're going to have a sandwich, you got to have chips. There's a reason Jersey Mike, Subway, Firehouse, all these places. You have the sandwich. You have the chips. It's a no-brainer. Number two – where I think you got to give the edge to Mikey's, but I'm keeping it, and I had it on steak and potatoes at two. Um, again, Mikey, heady play going with the lobster. It's going to be tough for me to compete with that. And then number one, I think the holy grail, it's it's a no-brainer. Um, go ahead and give me the burger and fries at, at number one. So uh, very similar lists. Going to be interesting to see how that breaks down, Joey D. I just would, since I had to pivot, I'd like to, if possible, to put soup and sandwich down and put the burger and fries to my number one because I would do that. Mike V, do you uh, do you approve? Yeah, I I, 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 the role. I don't mind switching the ranking. I I mind switching the item when you've already gone. So I I I'll, I'll allow it, Bob, if you allow it. Okay, I'm okay with it. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's allow that there for Joey D. So T Bone's going to be on that as well. Um, fellas, do you want to start us off, Mikey V? Honorable mention. Um, I will go with sandwich and chips, Bob. That was like one thing that was right on the cusp of making it for me. So, sandwich and a chip, any kind of sub sandwich, you got to have the chips on the sandwich. Like it's just, it's a, it's a must. It's a must. Joey D. Another one that now, if I had to pivot, I would have put in my top list: spaghetti and meatballs. Thought about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah I, thought I thought about, about it too. That. I'm just not a huge. I like meatballs. I'm just not like a huge, huge meatball guy. You know, the only thing, like I thought about peanut butter and jelly, but when's the last time we had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Like I know they go together so well, but when's the last time we can honestly look at each other and say we had a peanut butter and jelly well, sandwich? Well, that's not that's not the question is how often are you having it? It's, it's, it's the top pairings, Bob. Yeah, but it should be it's, it's, it's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in our lifetimes. So yeah, I have it every year at the same time every year. Five, I have it the same time every year. On um, vacation, when we go on vacation in the morning, we stay in a townhouse down the shore. And for breakfast, there's always uh, English muffins out, English muffin. Yeah. So for breakfast, you know, it's like vacation breakfast is like, I just want to get to the beach. Like, I really don't need like a big to do with breakfast. I'm just basically eating to survive at that point. Uh, so <laughs> little English muffin with peanut butter and jelly on it. I do that almost every morning on vacation. But then you're right, Bob, I don't have it for like another year. Yeah, that's the only thing. I think it's got to be our top five, what we Understood. like the most, not Understood. just, you know, what something to think about. I mean, I have a turkey bird every uh, Thanksgiving. That's the only time that I yeah, ever have it. That's fair, because um, I was thinking about a Thanksgiving combo, but I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But I'll tell you what, fellas, nonetheless, fantastic episode. Let's just clap it up right there. Let's just clap it up right there. Damn good episode. Um, Again, more to come for the boys. Mikey Mulligan's in full effect now, which will be very interesting to watch. And we will see you next time. That's another edition of the Bill and the Dumb Show.